Welcome to Health Watch, presented by Novant Health. I'm your host, June Baker. Our show features local physicians and health professionals discussing health topics of importance to local residents. First, we will welcome Dr. Stephen Robbins of Novant Health Urology Partners and Dr. Andy Smith of Novant Health Surgical Associates. Then we'll meet Natalie Young, a nurse practitioner who has recently joined Novant Health Family and Internal Medicine, South Brunswick. And finally, the co-chairs for this year's North Carolina 4th of July Festival will join us to share information about the upcoming event. Stay tuned to learn about valuable health topics with HealthWatch. First, let's welcome Dr. Stephen Robbins of Novant Health Urology Partners. Dr. Robbins, thank you so much for coming back to our show today. It's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, I think today we're going to uh, learn some, about something new, a new procedure, and so I'm really um, excited uh, to hear about it. It's one of the newest procedures that I think that you're offering. So, but before we do that, let's reintroduce you. Tell us a little bit about your background and your education. So I have been working with Novant Health for approximately four years. Mm -hmm. Prior to uh, working at Novant Health, I worked up in New York. 17 years in private practice in neurology. Long time. <laughs> I graduated from a New York University Medical School and did my urology training at Mount Sinai Medical Center in Manhattan. Great. Well, thanks for sharing that again. That's, some people may not have seen you on our show before, but um, uh, so we want to make sure they know about your credentials. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Novant Health Urology Partners. Um, who, who is your partner? So we have one other physician mm -hmm. besides myself, and it's Dr. Lydia Labachetta. Mm -hmm. Dr. Labachetta has been in the practice for five years, mm -hmm. and we actually just hired a nurse practitioner to join us as well. That's great. That's going to be a great... Um, Which will offer easier access to patients. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and you have um, an office, your main office is in Bolivia, correct? Correct. At, our, at the hospital. Our main office is on the campus of the hospital. And we also run three other satellite offices, uh, one in Leland, one in Southport, and another in Carolina Shores. Oh, that's great. So uh, folks don't have to travel so far. They can see um, in all the communities around that there's an office practically. So Correct. That'll be nice. Unfortunately, we're not at every office every day. I know, I know. But we're always but available in Bolivia. <laughs> always in Bolivia. Correct. Great. So I know you offer a wide range of urologic procedures, correct? Correct. Uh, but I understand now you're offering this new treatment, and it's relatively new, and it treats enlarged prostate, I believe? Correct. And it's called the Eurolift system treatment? Yeah, the Eurolift is the new device for the treatment of BPH. Mm -hmm. uh, BPH is benign enlargement of the prostate. Mm -hmm. Approximately 70% of men over the age of 60 will develop urinary symptoms relating to an enlarged prostate. The symptoms of an enlarged prostate typically start in the 40s or 50s, mm -hmm. and they can include slow urinary stream, waking up at night, urinary hesitancy, frequency, and urgency. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, and it's extremely common. Oh, it is extremely common. And you say 70%? 70% of men over the age of 60 mm -hmm. will develop urinary symptoms related to an enlarged prostate. But Not as early as 40, the symptoms may can start. begin. Mm -hmm. Not everyone gets treated. Treatment mm -hmm. is based on how much bother the symptoms cause mm -hmm. the patients. Sounds like it would be a big bother, and I think I'd be For there most. real soon. <laughs> so what treatment options do you generally uh, recommend for something like that? So the initial presentation for symptoms of an enlarged prostate, patients typically see their primary care doctors mm -hmm. first. Primary care doctors will typically offer medical therapy for this. Medication, so there are medications? Correct. So the medications are used to relax the muscles of the prostate. Mm -hmm. Typical medication names are Flomax, Rapaflow, 
and finasteride. Mm -hmm. And most of patients initially get treated, and we don't see the patients until the symptoms mm -hmm. reoccur on medication mm -hmm. or they don't respond to the medication. I see. And does it require a referral to your practice? Um, depending on a patient's insurance, they may require a referral to mm -hmm. see us. So it's dependent on the dependent. insurance. Some patients don't require it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, tell me more about this Eurolift system treatment. It's minimally invasive, is that correct? Correct. So the standard treatment for enlarged prostates, if they're not responding to medication, would have been uh, surgical treatments, which would include a TURP or a green light laser prostatectomy. Mm -hmm. The purpose of those procedures is to remove tissue that blocks the flow of urine. Mm -hmm. They also require, at times, hospitalization, and it's a pretty invasive procedure for men. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Eurolift system is an implantable suture device that is inserted through the urethra mm -hmm. and lifts or pushes the prostate tissue out of the way mm -hmm. without removing any tissue. Wow. It takes approximately 20 minutes to perform and the results are almost immediate. Wow, that's awesome. And it's done in the hospital it is though, a, is that correct? It's a hospital-based procedure. Mm -hmm. It's performed under anesthesia similar to a colonoscopy. Oh, so you're that's not easy. completely put to sleep. Right. The recovery after the procedure is very, very quick. And you go home from the procedure without a catheter in the bladder and hopefully uh, without much bleeding. Wow. So it's a same-day procedure. You same. would go home that day Correct. from the hospital. You would have almost immediate results for the most part. Correct. Approximately 80 to 90 percent of patients will see improvement in their urinary symptoms within the first three to four weeks. Wow. And studies have shown that uh, the symptoms stay improved for at least five years. Now the procedure has been oh. performed in the United States Mm -hmm. since 2013. So we only have five-year data to prove that how long it, it's effective. Oh, I see. But gosh, that sounds like, that, to me, that seems like a no-brainer. It, it has, uh, the, Eurolift, the Eurolift device reduces the need to take medication, so after the procedure is performed, no medical therapy is necessary. Oh, that's awesome. No surgical therapy is necessary, and it has reduces the incidence of side effects from medications, which typically can be uh, lowering blood pressure, dizziness, yeah. and for many, sexual side effects. Well, if our viewers out there are interested in, um, in seeing you, uh, do they just need to call the office? And so they can contact the office directly. They can also uh, visit us online at Novant Health Urology Partners in Bolivia, mm -hmm. or they can contact us through the Eurolift website at eurolift.com. Mm -hmm. We'll forward them to our office. Okay, and we'll have that information on the screen uh, during the interview too to uh, give that information to folks, but um, they can always just call your office and get more information. Correct. So, great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been wonderful having you. I think this is great information and uh, I'll be anxious to hear how, how it goes. Thank you for having me. You're quite welcome. Let's meet Dr. Andy Smith of Novon Health Surgical Associates. Well, welcome back to the show, Dr. Smith. What a pleasure. Thank you, June. It's great to be here. It is. It's great to have you. Um, so there may be some viewers out there who missed uh, you the last time you were on the show. Sure. So tell me a little bit about your background and your education. Sure. Uh, briefly, um, you know, I grew up in Tennessee. I went to the University of Tennessee uh, for medical school. Yes. Um, and then I did my surgical training in Wilmington, uh, actually just up the road. That's right. That's You're right. local. That's right. Yeah. And I've, <laughs> and I've been down here since August uh, of 2017, so almost a year now. And yeah. um, settling in and getting busy quickly. It's been good. <laughs> it's been great to have you here. So uh, tell me a little bit about your practice. It's Novantel Surgical Associates. That's right. Um, there's five of us, mm -hmm. uh, have four other partners. Um, we have four locations. We are, um, at, of course, at the hospital uh, in Bolivia on right. Highway 17, in right. Leland, in Southport, and also uh, down in the Carolina Shores area. 
So you're kind of spread out through the county. That's right. Makes it really convenient for all of our viewers. It's a big county, so we have to be. <laughs> Boy, isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of mileage. Um, well, today we're hoping to learn more about the, the new vein procedures that um, you're performing at Novant Health Surgical Associates. So tell me about the kinds of procedures that you offer. Sure. Um, the, the big one that we talk about primarily is, is what's called radiofrequency ablation. Okay. And if you, if you look at veins in general, you have a deep system and a superficial system. The deep okay. system is within the muscles. Um, it, it carries the majority of the blood out of the leg uh, and back to the heart. Uh -huh. And it's one that we don't like to touch. It's, it's very sacred. We stay away from the deep venous system. Okay. Uh, the superficial venous system is the one that we're interested in with this procedure. It's typically the part of the vein system that causes problems with pain and varicose veins, leg swelling, non-healing oh. venous ulcers in the legs, and, and things of that sort. So you you can see most of the the veins that we're talking about right sometimes that's right yeah it, it, every patient's a little different uh -huh. so I try not to you know pigeonhole oh, okay. certain things but sure but um, what what we tell folks is if you have you know some of the following symptoms or a combination um, pain in your legs restless legs at night cramping oh. swelling varicose veins those are the real the big four uh -huh. that are signs and symptoms of a potential problem with the superficial venous system Okay. And this procedure, the ablation, can you explain that to me a little bit about what that entails? I can. Um, to give you a little better understanding, the vein's job is to bring blood back from the legs to the heart. Right. So it's working against gravity. Okay. okay. And when the v blood flow is trying to get back up the leg against gravity, we need some help. So we have these one-way valves that are in our veins and they okay. let blood go up but not pool back, back down. down. Correct. So over time, those valves can malfunction or deteriorate, and they become what we call, the word is incompetent. Okay. okay. So an incompetent, incompetent valve. Incompetent veins. Right. And that, is, that, that description is called venous reflux. Oh. And so when people have venous reflux, the pressure increases in the legs as the blood pools in the legs, and it puts outward pressure on those superficial veins. And the branches off of some of these superficial veins can dilate up, mm -hmm. and those are what varicose veins come from. Okay. Those are obviously problematic for a lot of people. Yes. And so what we do is we go in with a catheter in our office, done done as an office-based procedure. Okay, don't have to go to the hospital. Don't have to go to your office. Correct. Okay. Um, we go in with a catheter and we put the catheter within one of these big veins called the usually it's the saphenous vein. There's another vein sometimes that we treat, and we'll actually heat the vein up with radio frequency. Oh. And the idea there is to warm the vein to the point that it, it scars down and closes off. So we want to shut oh. that vein down and redistribute the blood flow into healthier veins that do have competent valves so that you don't have that pooling. So when you shut that, that one down, the blood finds its way into other veins. and Exactly. Remember we talked about that other deeper system. You've got that deep mm -hmm. system to back you up. So, right. the valve, so the, when we shut the superficial veins down, we shun it back into the deep system. The body's amazing, isn't it? It How is. How it can just sort of figure out a new route. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> And so, um, how about those little veins, like I call them spider veins? Sure. Do we do anything with those, or is that? We can. Um, sometimes those will actually get better with uh -huh. the procedure that I, that I discussed. Uh -huh. um, not everybody's a candidate for that procedure. Mm -hmm. We need to do a little workup, including an ultrasound and, and right. a couple other things to make sure that we're doing the right procedure for you, but mm -hmm. um, with mostly the they're just ugly. Right. With the spider <laughs> veins, um, there are some cosmetic options for those. Unfortunately, insurances don't always cover sure. some of those, yeah. but it is certainly uh, we can discuss those things and, and what those options are. Sometimes it involves injections and things like that, sclerotherapy that can help uh -huh. get rid of some of those. Do they ever hurt? Do spider veins hurt? They can. They oh, can. Really? Yeah, it, and it kind of just depends. Every patient's different, as mm -hmm. I said, sure. so it may depend on what the cause of those spider veins is. Uh huh. So what's the most common uh, complaint, vein complaint coming into your office? What do you see most of? Mostly swelling and pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Most people um, have a lot of swelling or, or pain in their legs. If you look at venous disease, um, it, it actually is about 10 times more common than arterial disease. We always think of problems with the arteries. Um, the problem with vein disease is it's a lot of times unrecognized. With mm -hmm. arterial problems, you have yeah. heart attacks, you yeah. lose legs, things like that. Mm -hmm. With veins, uh, it's, it's not a life-threatening issue most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people kind of suffer in silence with this. Mm -hmm. 
Let's talk about recovery. Is there a recovery period? Do you shut down for a while, or what, what do we great, do? Great question. Um, if we're talking about the ablation procedure, mm -hmm. like I said, it's an office yeah, brace but... procedure. It takes me anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour to do the procedure in the office. Um, what we do is you, we have you put a compression stocking on, or, or we wrap your leg with a compression wrap, mm -hmm. and you wear that for a few days, but you're up on your feet and back to normal activity the next day. Really? So you can drive and everything the next day? Absolutely. Well, that's great. Um, how about the results? Are patients generally happy with the results? And mm -hmm. um, Every patient's different. different. Sure. Some results are perfect, some results are pretty good. Um, yeah. I haven't seen a patient yet that hasn't had Said some improvement. Said I wish I had them back. <laughs> sure, right. So I think, I think you, you'll find most people have a significant improvement in their, in their lifestyle and mm -hmm. what they can do and, and in how they feel after mm -hmm. this procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, it was great having you on the show today. Um, I'm really excited about that new procedure. We want to get that word out there um, uh, about the new vein procedures. Wonderful, so, wonderful. Well, and uh, they can just call the office and make an appointment? They can call the office. Like I said, it's, it's not for everybody. A lot of times we have, to, we have to do a couple things to see if you're a good candidate for right. it. Um, but you know, we're always a phone call away, and my nurses are very knowledgeable about this. Right. And so a lot of times there may be some questions we can even answer for you over the phone to determine if you need to come in and see us. Great. Well, thanks again for being here. It was a pleasure to have you. You're very welcome. Great to be here. Thanks. Now, let's welcome nurse practitioner Natalie Young of Novant Health Family and Internal Medicine, South Brunswick. Welcome to the show today, Natalie. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having me. We're, you're quite welcome. So um, I want to uh, the viewers out there to get to know you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your education. Okay. Well, my name is Natalie Yunt, and I'm a family nurse practitioner. I'm from the foothills of North Carolina. You sound like it. Yeah, <laughs> below Boone and Blowing Rock, a uh -huh. uh, little town called Granite Falls. Hometown of Eric Church, country music star. Oh, yes, I love yeah. Eric Church. Um, my education, I got my undergrad at Winston-Salem State. Nice. I finished my master's at UNC Wilmington right up the road. Oh. Um, I spent 12 years in surgery and emergency medicine as a registered nurse. and. I thought I wanted to do more and I finished my degree and practiced rural medicine for about three years mm -hmm. and I like a challenge so I reached out to Novant down here in Brunswick and so I'm the newest team member at uh, Novant Health South Brunswick uh, Family and Internal Medicine. Well, we're just glad to have you. You're so you're so beautiful. Thank oh, you. thank you. <laughs> you you're, and you're so friendly. You're going to do well in this area. So, tell me about your work experiences. Where have you worked? Oh, mostly since I'm from the foothills, um, in hospitals and ERs in that area, mm -hmm. um, the surgery center in that area, and then with rural medicine, we had a mobile unit. We had oh, offices. That's awesome. Um, I love that because it gets the health care to the people who really need it Absolutely. when you have those mobile units. Absolutely. And there are areas, even in this county, where there's um, there no transportation or anything. So I think that's a that, that speaks volumes of somebody who goes out and does that because it's not the easiest kind of medicine to practice. It's, it takes some work and you have to have a van and, you know, you do a lot of traveling. So that's great. Um, I understand that you're from Wilmington, or you were in Wilmington at one time? That's where I got my master's, UNC Wilmington. So you did mm -hmm. live there for a while? Yeah. Yeah, you lived in the big town of Wilmington. Yeah. That's a lovely city. It's, it is great. That traffic is fierce. It is fierce. Uh -huh. Well, let's talk a little bit about Novant Health Family and Internal Medicine in South Brunswick, where mm -hmm. you are now employed. Uh -huh. and. Um, for some of our viewers may not be real familiar with that so can you tell us about your location and um, about your partners okay well I work with uh, two other physicians mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Candace Seaven and Dr. Stephanie Connell there's a PA that works with me Adam Thompson and he's wonderful oh he's very I know Adam very well yeah. we great. have a very friendly staff yes, easy you. registration close parking we try not to make anybody wait um, <laughs> and our patients have my chart 
If they have problems or questions, they can always email providers uh, for those urgent concerns that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, we're located right off of 17 in Carolina Shores. Um, also, we offer OBGYN, urology, surgical, and imaging. Yes, there have been a lot of services added at that facility, mm -hmm. and it's so nice to have the imaging there. So if you have a patient that needs um, some studies, it's so convenient for them. It surely is. Mm -hmm. uh, and since I do family medicine, I treat pediatrics. Well, that's what I was just going to mm -hmm. ask you. Do you see patients of all ages? I do. Pediatrics, adolescents, and adults. How young do you see a pediatric patient? Will you do a newborn um, exam, or, or do they have to be a few months old? Or Usually a few months old, those fresh newborn they usually like to be seen by a pediatrician mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that they catch all the things that may be occurring during that process. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about maybe your special interest. Do you have uh, an area of medicine that you're particularly interested in? Well, quality of life is so important oh, and yeah. mobility. Osteoarthritis sometimes hinders that with achy joints. Mm -hmm. I do joint injections to help with any pain wow. and irritation to those areas. You know, after we rule out that there's not an injury. Sure. As well as promoting wellness and treating other health care issues. Oh, I like that. It's sort of a... Uh because uh, as we get older, our, we do hurt our joints and what have you. It's nice to be able to go to our family provider and, mm -hmm. and have a, like a full service. Absolutely. That's I thought great. I was going to learn how to snowboard one time and my <laughs> knees kill me, so I use them too. Well, and that's such a convenient, um, convenient practice with imaging and then to have the specialist there. And now you mentioned some of those. What were they again? OBGYN, uh -huh. um, urology, and surgical, and I think, surgical, right? And surgical, and we also do imaging while we're there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about lab services? Do you draw labs in your office? Absolutely. We have labs right there. So th there would be no need to like go to the hospital or do anything like that in no. another lab. Everything can no. be done there. Well, great. Well, before we wrap up, tell us again how we can get in touch with you at Novant Health Family and Internal Medicine, South Brunswick, and that is a mouthful. That is a mouthful. <laughs> that phone number is 910-579-8363. Wonderful. Just call us up. We're right there off 17. I love your accent. It's so <laughs> cute. It's so cute. Well, Nellie, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you. I, I think I'm going to call and make an appointment. You're just awesome. I really want to spend more time with you. Well, I'll look You're forward great. to it. We'll talk about all kinds of things. Okay. Well, thanks again for being with us, and I hope to have you back real soon after you've been there for a while. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finally, let's welcome Duncan Hilburn and Tricia Howarth to learn about North Carolina's 4th of July Festival. Welcome, Duncan and Tricia. What a pleasure to have you guys here. Well, thank you. It's great Thanks to be here. Us. And I'm excited to talk about this. I'm, I love the 4th of July Festival, so I'm really, really um, excited to hear about this. So first, um, let's talk a little bit about the committee uh, that runs the festival and um, how that all comes together. It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> I love it. Well, we have a committee of about 30 people. Mm -hmm. and okay. All the different events have a chair. And then we also have a board of directors of seven people, and which Trisha and I are co chairs this okay. year. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think I realized that there was a, an actual board. Um, you know, as long as I've lived here, I didn't really know that. Yes, we're uh, incorporated as the official 4th of July Festival for the state of North Carolina, so we have our own board of directors and our own committees. Mm -hmm. Well, um, great. I, um, I can't imagine it, but some of our viewers out there might not be familiar with this event, but I can't imagine that. <laughs> so um, share a little bit about the history of the event. I think that's real interesting. It is. I mean, we, they've been celebrating the 4th of July in that Southport area for over 200 years. It started with colonial ships and cannons. 
Of course, now it's been replaced with um, hip parades and, and <laughs> Fire orchestrated <drugs>. fireworks, <laughs> and so it's come a long way, but it's been a celebration for over 200 years, wow. so it's steeped in history. Damn, that was a long time. Yeah. So how many um, people do you expect this year? Usually have 40 to 50,000 yeah. people attend the festival yeah. over a three-day period. Wow. And there's so many activities, right? There are over 50 activities associated with the festival, yeah. Hmm. Now, how many days this year will the festival be? It runs uh, 10 days. It goes from June 24th all the way to Ten July days. 4th. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it starts the week before. Mm -hmm. It starts the week before. Oh, my. So are all the events in Southport? Uh, Beach Day is June 30th. That occurs on Oak Island. So that's a different kind of contests and games at the Shag Contest. There's a sand decorating contest, mm -hmm. you know, skate contest, different things in the concert, mm -hmm. but everything else is in Southport. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that uh, this year Novant Health is really, really proud to again be a sponsor for the event, and I understand that they're going to serve as the presenting sponsor for the naturalization um, ceremony, and that's always such a moving event. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that event and how many you expect? Well, and we're first of all very thankful to Novant for yeah. its sponsorship and all of our sponsors. They are very important to us. Absolutely. And this year at the naturalization ceremony, we are expecting 88 people to be sworn in as new citizens. And it's a, always, as you said, a very moving experience. It just, it took, it just Mm -hmm. just really embodies the 4th of July. I think so too. And uh, it's a very proud moment for a lot of people. And this year's keynote speaker is Judge Jason Disbro, so we're great. really looking forward to that. Yeah, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. And is the big band playing prior to that? They are. They'll be playing at 3, and the naturalization ceremony will start at 4 on July 3rd. On July 3rd. Yes. That's great. Now, Duncan, I know that music is a big part of the 4th of July festival. You always have great bands. Mm -hmm. Tell me some of those. Okay, we've got three headliners this year. Uh, July 2nd will be the Brunswick Big Band. They'll be playing traditional patriotic music. Then July 3rd, we have Liquid Pleasure playing. And then on July 4th, we have the chairman of the board. But we have bands all day from about 11 o'clock in the morning. So there's different rap music to bluegrass to pop music. There'll be a little bit of something for everyone. If you go on our nc4thofjuly.com website, you can see a complete list. Well, let's move on to the parade because mm -hmm. that's a big thing. And that is on what day? July 4th starts at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. We'll, we'll have a, over 100 different participants okay. in the parade, fire trucks, shriners, all kinds of things. Uh, it starts at 11, but I'd encourage people to get there a little bit earlier. How about the day before, Duncan? Yeah. <laughs> they well, set up tents and chairs the day before, absolutely, yep. So yeah, you got to get a good spot. It's a mile and a half parade, but yes, <laughs> no, get there early. I always think it's so funny. My husband and I will ride downtown like the day before, and there'll be all these trucks yes. parked with their, you know, backwards, and they've got their lawn chairs in there, yes. and they're ready for that parade. Yes. So I know that Novant Health will again be mm -hmm. part of the parade. Yes. And um, I think that last year we uh, they brought the um, mobile mammography truck. Yes, with they it. did. Yes. So <laughs> not sure about the plan this year, but they're real excited. So again, let's let's talk about um, we're about to wrap up. Let's talk about how many days and when it actually starts. On uh, is it Thursday or when so, the vendors? Well, the parade, the festival starts Sunday, June twenty fourth. Okay. That's with opening ceremony. We have a military band play then, right. and we read the uh, historical reenactor reads the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. And then June 30th is Beach Day. When that's when things really get cranked up. That's the uh, Saturday, yeah. and then it goes through the fourth. Mm -hmm. Through the fourth of July, and it ends on the fourth. Is yes, that correct? With the fireworks. Great. Oh, forgot about the fireworks. Yes, yes those are awesome. Yeah, you better be prepared to be there a while. <laughs> Yes, we've got a big contributor this year, so we're going to double the size of the fireworks. Really? That'll be amazing. Yes, it will. Yes, it will be great. Wow. And the band does come back on right after the fireworks, fireworks. so whoever wants to hang out a little longer down on the uh, waterfront, waterfront. Cause it certainly can do so. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Well, thank you both sir, so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure to have you, and I'm excited about the 4th of July, and I'll see you all there. Yes, thank you. Most important thing, everything's free. I hope everybody knows that. I know, that. everything's so, free. It doesn't cost you any money. Well, because the sponsors like Novant. So That's thank great. You. Well, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to ATMC TV's Health Watch. I hope this information was beneficial for you and your family. 
If you have any questions or topics that you would like to see discussed on a future show, please email them to atmctv at atmc.com. Visit NovantHealth.org for more information on Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center, our local doctors, and general health information. Thanks again for joining us today. Be sure to join us next time for Health Watch on ATMC TV. This is ATMC TV, your community channel.